Hello, today we're going to stitch this lovely spring mandala hoop. It uses um, pico stitch and tulip stitch as the main feature for this and we're also going to use some back stitch as well. I'm going to stitch the four inch version but there's a five inch template on my blog as well. All the details are in the post. So I trace the design using a sublime stitching pen and some transfer paper. Um, it looked like that and then I ironed it on just to some white quilting cotton. This was just a scrap piece that I had. Um, it is a little bit paler in a few places. That just happens. It's where the paper sits on um, the fabric on my ironing board and it's fine anyway. Um, I'm going to put it into this blue hoop eventually um, and I'm just going to use one colour thread which is quite unusual for me. I've picked 3851 which is a current favourite. Um, I'm actually going to stitch it in a five inch hoop though just to give myself a little bit more room around the edge. Um, it fits perfectly into the four inch hoop and you can stitch it in a four inch hoop if you don't have a five. It's absolutely fine but I just wanted to have a bit more wiggle room at this point <laughs> um, just to give myself that extra space. So let me just pop that in the hoop and tighten that up. Hang on, no I'm not happy with that, let's just move it. Feels like it's not in the right place. I mean obviously it doesn't matter, it's not, it doesn't have to be perfectly central at this stage but make sure you're happy with the positioning um, and then tighten it when you're happy with that. Just going to pull those top bits gently, check the tension. I found my thread magic. If you watched last week's video, you know I lost it. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm going to break with tradition. Normally I use three strands, but I think this design is going to work nicely with two. Just for a change. Tie a knot in the end and trim the excess in exactly the same way as we have done in all of the other projects for the Happy Stitch project. Right, I'm going to start with the tulips in the centre first. I'm going to start from the centre and work outwards. The reason that I'm doing the tulips first is that that centre circle, I'm going to stitch in back stitch. I think that's going to be easier once these little tulips are in. So tulip stitch starts a little bit like um, a pico stitch. That's why we're doing them the same week. I think it's pico anyway. So you do a loop like that, a bit like you do for link stitch and then you put that long tail on. Pico stitch is also known as long tail daisy, that's another name for it which I think I forgot to say in the uh, stitch tutorial video so apologies for that. You may know pico as a different stitch but they're essentially the same. Let me just get myself sorted here. All in a tangle. Right, so now I've done that, I'm going to just come up um, to one side for that leaf there. Let's get that in the right place. You just need to be really careful that you're not pulling too tightly because it's very, very easy to pull these out of shape. Um, usually I would stitch um, this kind of stitch um, like a, a link or a, a chain, something like that. I often use pearl thread. So I'm using two strands here. It's not my usual go-to number of strands, I have to say. So it feels a little bit uncomfortable for me. But I wanted to do something different with it. Don't be afraid to try something that's different. Okay. So when we are tying on the back, just again, be really careful not to pull too tightly. Just be super, super gentle with it. Um, and then what we'll do after we've... Um, trimmed off the thread is we'll just go back to the front and check that we're happy with the positioning and if it's moved out of place a little bit we can just wiggle it. Well, that's not too bad actually. Not too bad at all. Quite pleased with that. Super. So I'm going to stitch the other ones all the way around that edge. Let's do one more now before I cut away and do some Make it a little bit faster. <laughs> as much as it would be lovely to sit and record the whole thing, I think you probably need it to be a little bit faster. So I'll do some of them off camera. Always reminds me of those um, slow TV programmes that are on BBC4. And it's like somebody carving a wooden 
totem and pole thing or something else and it's just it's actually really nice to watch isn't it it's really nice to just sit and watch people make things maybe one day i'll i'll just do one as a sort of slow stitching video rather than as a tutorial I think that might be quite nice but not today today is not the day because <laughs> i'm a little bit last minute this week anyway that's okay right i'm just wiggling the stitch there before i put that longer stitch in this one doesn't seem to want to stay where i want it to be so i'm just going to wiggle again that's okay and then we're going to put this extra stitch in into that picot just to make it into a tulip So you're not actually catching, you're not going through the fabric at that point, you're, you're just sort of threading it underneath that stitch that's there on the top. Oops, excellent, I've managed to leave myself at the back with a dangly bit. Never mind, I'll sort that out later. I might even unpick it, we'll see. We'll see how I go, see how I feel. <laughs> but for now, let's just trim the excess there. Yeah. It's going to be too short to tie. Never mind, that's okay. Doesn't look too bad from the front. We'll see how we get on. Right, so I'm going to go and stitch the rest now. I'm going to put the centre circle in with some back stitches and then come back when that's done. Ta da! There we go. It's looking alright, isn't it? I did unpick that one. I did it again. It didn't want to stay. And there's the lovely back stitches in the centre. And as you can see, I've started. The next bit that lovely pattern around the edge of this circle and i'm doing this bit first because again i'm going to back stitch the full circle that's just on the inside okay so i'm going to make a loop and go in for the next stitch there but i'm going to hold on to that and it's so it's a little bit like the chain stitch but it's kind of open to create that pattern I don't know if this is a separate stitch. Is this a separate stitch? If you know if it has a name, please let me know. I don't know what the name is. Don't know what it's called, but that's what I'm doing. And it's really, really nice to create that pattern. I like it. I'm definitely going to be um, using this again. Let me just sort that out. What's that fabric doing? Hang on. Right, let's do another one. So you're going to come up through exactly the same hole where the previous one finished, okay? So be really gentle, don't pull too tight, catch the loop with your thumb and then come up through the top of that and then it's just putting a little tie stitch on. So just like you do for um, link stitch or at the end of a chain stitch, we're just securing that in place with a tiny stitch and I think that is a really lovely effect. I like it so I'm going to stitch all the way around and then I'll do the center circle with back stitches as well um, just like the center and there we go that's what it looks like when all of that section is complete um, around the edge there and as you can see I've added the back stitches in too started on the top section as well so let's put the next pico stitch in so these are just pico or the long tail daisy without the extra line to make them into the tulips. Okay, so make sure that when you go back through where you've come up through the fabric there that you're going through the same hole. Okay, and then come up again and just catch that loop. You can use your thumb um, to kind of help guide it if you want to. Um, use your needle to wiggle it and check that you're happy with the position. And all the time, make sure that you're covering those lines and... Um, not pulling too tight because you don't want to pull it out of shape so now I'm just going to turn over again and just try and tie that really gently. Um, I think the pico and the tulips look really really nice with the back stitch. Um, I had thought about adding some other stitches into this um, spring mandala but to be honest I wanted them to stand out and I didn't want anything that was going to be too thick um, and I think that it actually works really nicely. You can see everything, but feel free to experiment. If you want to do that center circle in satin or 
um, you know, add a few of the other stitches in that we've learnt, that's entirely up to you. Put a few French knots here and there if you wanted to. Um, the other thing that you could obviously experiment with this kind of design is colour. <laughs> obviously I'm stitching with one colour here, um, just because I just thought it would work really nicely and I love this colour. Um, but it would this kind of design would really really lend itself nicely to having loads and loads of different colours in it so don't just stick to one if you don't want to feel free to go as mad as you like with as many colours as you like <laughs> um, and just really really make it your own because it would look fabulous um, with different shades I think this bit that I'm stitching now which I'm just doing with a little back stitch um, just trying to keep the stitches nice and even. I think because there's three lines here it's kind of crying out for like a little ombre effect. So a light, a mid shade and a dark shade of the same colour. Whoops, gonna got myself tangled again. Never mind, just sort that out, there we go. So yeah, I think that would look lovely um, just for a little bit of shading um, in there. It could look really cool. But it's entirely up to you but if you do um, stitch this as usual don't forget to share it with me because I would love to see what you make. Um, another thing you could do is stitch it on some colourful fabric instead, it doesn't have to be white. You could add an extra pop of colour um, with some colourful fabric, it would look really nice with like a light shade of fabric and then stitched in a darker shade so you could do it with like blue. Um, light blue fabric and then dark blue thread. I think that would look really cool. So yeah, don't forget to share them with me because I can't wait to see what you make. So I'm just keeping a little bit of this real-time stitching on the on the video this week um, because if you're new to this project and you haven't done back stitch, I thought it would be quite handy to just show you how I'm stitching around these curves. So I'm keeping the stitches nice and small. Um, you can vary the size slightly if you go around the curve if you want to and if you keep them roughly the same size and fairly small for a fairly small curve um, that should be okay anyway. So make sure that when you're doing the back stitches that your needle is going right back in where the previous stitch ended because we want this to be one continuous line particularly with a mandala like this you don't want to have sections where um, they're not meeting quite so much because you'll lose the effect. It kind of want, look, wants to look like you've sort of drawn it with a thread I guess. So let's just keep stitching around here. Um, I have found it easiest to start, whoops, got myself tangled. I have. I've gone, I've only gone and got a knot in there. Come on. Oh. It still happens to the best of us, <laughs> even with two strands, people. Oh, goodness me. Hang on. Let me sort this out. E dear me. Nope. Still there. Oh, bear with me. Just going to need to um, try and sort this out. There we go. Didn't take as long as I thought in the end. Sometimes, <laughs> Sometimes you can be there 10 minutes. Nobody wants to see me try and sort out a knot for 10 minutes. That's not fun. So anyway, let's get back onto this lovely back stitching. What was I saying? Um, oh yeah, um, I find it easier to do the outer shapes here first and then work towards the middle. But it doesn't really matter, you don't have to do that. You can do it any which way you like. But um, I found that easier to just get those ones in and then the lines um, where they meet the circle just seem to feel a bit neater. They might not to you, that's fine. Do whatever works for you. So I'm going to continue to um, stitch all of the picot and the back stitch around the edge of this design and then the very last thing that I'll do before I um, put the whole finished design into its blue hoop. The last thing that I'm going to do is stitch a back stitch around that final circle around there because that's really going to make it pop. Again I didn't want to do that first because I wanted the stitches that meet the circle from 
these bits that I'm stitching now and um, the pico around the edge, I wanted them to be kind of like really, really flush. And I think by stitching the circle around the edge after that, it's going to kind of cover up any bits that are slightly over or slightly not quite there. It'll it'll hide it a bit better. So um, that's why I've decided to do that at the end. You might want to work from the outside in and if you find that easier, then that's entirely up to you. There's no right way or wrong way to stitch it. This is just just saying what I find has been helpful. And I did stitch this this afternoon, so you can see the finished hoop. Hooray! I'm really pleased with how that's turned out. And for somebody who likes using lots of colours, um, I'm pleased that it's turned out so well. So um, have a little look on my website if you want to stitch the bigger version instead. Have fun! Mm -hmm.